Hey everybody, today I want to talk to y'all about cylinder head porting for the home hobbyist builder. This is not going to be like a really long in-depth how to make 900 horsepower out of your small block. It's none of that. This is just, you're a hobbyist, you're doing your first second engine build, and you know, you want to squeeze a couple extra horsepower out of your motor, but you don't want to do anything crazy. You just want to Kind of have the fun, have the experience, and you maybe want to take it to the next level. Instead of just putting in a cam, maybe you want to start getting into the world of porting. There is a way to do that on an extremely tight budget with minimal tools, and I'll explain to you how. Um, but first things first, you need the right tool for the right job. Uh, this is just Harbor Freight Dremel knockoff grinder tool, right? like 30, 40 bucks, they're not very expensive. Um, the, the key here is the, the type of grinding device you wanna use. Take a look at this little model number here. It's made by Dremel, it's called a tungsten carbide bit, and it's like a fine grain. And if you see the model number here is 9901-03, it's just a really small little head, and it is unbelievably hard piece of metal. It will, it will cut through anything. Um, except aluminum. This works on iron heads, which if you're a budget builder, like myself, and you're just trying to get this thing running again, you have iron heads, you don't have aluminum heads. This is an International Harvester 392 engine, which a lot of these old workhorses are known for terrible cylinder head flow, and we're gonna try to make some small improvements to that. So here's the first tool you need is grinder and a tungsten carbide bit. Shop around online if you can find one. My grandfather left this to me. This is called a C-clamp valve spring compressor. I absolutely love these things because it makes removing the valve extremely easy. So we're gonna take a look at this uh, cylinder right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get the uh, valve out of the way. And just take this guy, open it up, put it on top of the valve, right like this and squeeze. And of course, this thing's been on for 50 years, so it might put up a fight. And if that happens, we're gonna have to go ahead and get a hammer and knock this sucker loose because these things haven't been pulled in 50 years. So we're gonna try to soften up that valve keeper. So just grab ourselves a socket, grab a hammer. I'm gonna loosen this up, try to free it up a little bit because again, this thing's been stuck on here for 50 years. So that's a little stubborn. All right. We rattle this cage a little bit. Oh gosh, this thing's heavy. So once you loosen up your uh, valve keeper, grab the compressor, open it up, go ahead and lay it on here. And the, the uh, this cup here goes in the valve take this and give it a good squeeze and hopefully this will pop loose ah there it goes do that don't lose these those little guys are called valve retainers you don't want to lose those keep track of them yeah. all right so now we've done that and we'll go ahead and take this valve pull it out this one's actually in surprisingly good condition this is 194,000 miles on it but what we've just done is we've removed the valve so we've exposed the inside of the chamber here and we'll try cleaning this up a little bit this here is called the valve guide and then the intake valve sits right here when that closes that makes your airtight seal now what do we want to do in terms of porting um, it's actually pretty simple in our case we're gonna take what's called the intake manifold gasket this guy right here and what you do is go ahead and get your bolts to, to line it up. But what you're gonna do is line up all these little bolt holes, put a couple bolts in it to hold it steady. And you can see what I did is I, I just took some spray paint and ran it across the manifold. And I just cleaned this with carburetor cleaner really quick to get the paint off. Don't do that on a fresh head. This, this is gonna go to the machine shop and be dropped in a vat of boiling whatever. So I don't care about it being covered in paint so much. But what you'll do is you take the intake manifold gasket, gently bolt it down, get all those lined up really good, spray the paint on it. And when you look in here, see these little green edges? 
These are the parts of the cast iron that are interfering. So as the air passes through, it actually hits this, ricochets off, and creates turbulence. Don't worry about this. That's the water uh, for the uh, anti water holes for the antifreeze. We don't care about those very much. But you can see over here what I've already done is I've been grinding just enough to make that green paint disappear. That's what you call gasket matching. And it'll slightly improve airflow and just eliminate some of that turbulence. So that is the very first phase of cylinder head porting. So I'll run my Dremel here and I'll show you just how easy it is to do on a set of cast iron heads. Let's take your Dremel, get your little head set up, turn it on, and just start working down the metal. Gently, don't press hard. Let the machine do the work for you. Just take it. Start working it back and forth. Right like that. Again, do not press hard. You don't need to press hard. Let the die grinder do the work. Well, now I'll take a quick look, and as you can see, we're already starting to make progress in just a couple of minutes. We're getting a little bit closer to making this green line disappear completely. And we're just going to keep doing that on all of the intake ports until we get all of those lined up. Once you've done that, you've just gasket matched your cylinder heads, and that'll, you know, squeeze a couple extra horsepower out of it. Nothing major, and it won't hurt your fuel economy any. And the next thing you want to do is, after you get done using that grinder, you get a little sanding head like this. Something a little bit larger than the head of your tool. Because I can't really go in here like this, because I'm going in at an angle, and it's just going to scuff the daylight side of the intake port and not actually accomplish anything. So get something a little bit of chunkiness to it. So these little sanding heads here. And once you get done doing the gasket matching, you start working your way down here, and you just start cleaning up the, the roughness of the cast iron a little bit. Um, with these, it's not gonna take off a lot of metal, so you really can't screw it up unless you go out of your way to screw it up. And at least with cast iron, it has a tendency to grind slowly. So at least, you know, again, you're really gonna have to go out of your way. Like this right here, that, that's an inch thick. Like you're, you're not gonna hit the water jacket in here and cause a leak. Like that's not gonna happen unless you just throw this thing into a drill press and ram a drill bit sideways. You know, it's, it, a cat, old iron is very forgiving. That's really what you wanna do for your most basic level porting. And after you've done that, uh, what you can start doing with uh, different types of uh, grinders and heads and things, get different sets. As you go in here, maybe get a ball-shaped one. Start, sorry, start carefully working around in here and just clean up the metal a little bit. Don't do nothing crazy. And if you really, really want to go all out, what you can actually do is carve down a, this lower lip of the valve guide if you're feeling really uh, adventurous. And it depends on the machine. Sometimes you can go in through the intake port. Sometimes you go in through the uh, valve. But if it fits... You can get a grinder in here and work down just the edge of the valve guide 
and that opens up a little bit more airflow, but that's not really important for something like this because this is gonna make all of 290, 300 horsepower. We're just trying to make a slight improvement in the hopes of gaining a couple horsepower and that extra 0.1 mile per gallon. But this is just a really basic overview to show that you can do your own cylinder head porting with nothing more than a $40 grinder and a $15 tungsten carbide bit and $20 package of sanding wheels. And you can really improve the, uh, the state of this rough iron and clean it up a little bit. And uh, the best part is you won't lose anything for it. You're not gonna lose horsepower for having your intake ports cleaned up. So it's really not a complicated process. You can come out here, spend a few hours on it, just clean up some of the rough iron, and you can gasket match your head. And on the intake manifold, if it's necessary, you can do really the same thing. So here's the original iron manifold. And if we're worried about that, ugh, gosh, these things are heavy. You flip it upside down, and you'll do the same thing. You will line all these up, spray some paint on there, find all the areas that are not good, and just gently work down a little bit of the iron. And just be mindful of how thick it is at any point. This is, this is pretty thick. Like, that's like a good quarter of an inch thick. But what you'll do is, I can actually see right here, is you're just gonna wanna work down this line to kinda get everything to match the gaskets just to kind of improve the overall transition of air, you know, from the carburetor through the manifold to the cylinder heads. And we're just gonna reduce a little bit of that turbulence and make it a little bit better. So it's really not a complicated process. And these die grinders, again, they're like 15 bucks a piece and you can get several hours out of them. You know, if you're gonna do the both heads and both sides of the intake manifold, maybe just buy two of them. But again, just gently whiz back and forth and keep working it down so you get that uh, gasket area lined up. And that is your bottom tier cylinder head porting and you only have to have about $60 worth of tools. I know it's better to have an air compressor and the die grinders and all the fancy kits, but if you don't wanna spend a lot of money, you don't have a lot of money and you're just doing like a 350 Chevy, $500 budget, but you just wanna make a few improvements for $60 worth of tools, you can squeeze a couple more ponies out of your engine. So it's really not that bad. But I hope this was helpful to y'all. So until we meet again, stay gold.